Today, 50 players attempt to survive 100 days. In a world with no rules. Anything can happen in this hardcore world. So here it is. Surviving 100 days as a Minecraft bandit. But if you guys go on to enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new around here. But let the Minecraft bandit journey begin. So the journey began with all 50 players falling from the sky. 50 players is a lot of players. How many are going to survive? I have no idea, but I am going to be doing my best to be raiding these folks. I want to be the richest Minecraft bandit on the server. No mercy for these players. But I started off like any other player, by mining down wood and looking for a suitable cave to start gathering resources. I found a cave just as soon as another player found a cave. And we had an awkward stare off. But I ended up winning in the end and he ran off. This is now my cave and I'm gonna get mining. The next two days are a grace period. That means there's no killing anyone. You can only die by mobs and natural things. So, when I leave this cave, I wanna make sure I leave fully prepared for anything to happen. I started mining and I made myself a full set of iron armor. At least that way when I leave, I'll be protected. After mining resources what seems like for ages, I killed a skeleton that dropped a handgun. The gun had no ammo, but I'm sure it can be used for something near in the future. After that, I managed to go on a bit of a lucky spree. I managed to find myself diamonds, which is perfect because now I can mine the obsidian I'll need for an enchant table. And I also found a slime. And you might be like, wait, what? Like, it's a slime. Slimes are incredibly useful for making guns. You need slime balls. And lots of them. Day four, I returned to the surface with plenty of materials, but now I needed a base. Somewhere that will keep me safe and allow me to get rich. Because without a safe place, I'm just going to end up dead like all the players I'm going to kill on the server. When I came to the surface, it was nighttime. And now the grace period is over. So I need to make a safe place. I have to find where I'm going to make my base. This is when I found the area that I wanted to live. I wanted to live in a secret underground bunker. And I found the coolest way that I can get into it. Disguised by leaves around it. My entrance would be inside a tree. I dug out a little area and I deposited all my items into a chest. Now it was time to go on a mission to get some food. I was going low and it's a needed resource. Now while on the hunt for animals, I managed to hunt down the wrong type of animal. Another player. Now I knew I couldn't eat him. That would be wrong. <laughs> but I had a genius idea. It was the start in days. Guns were incredibly expensive to make, but I managed to get one from a lucky drop. I knew exactly what player this was. I knew by the skin. So I pulled him into my Discord to talk to him. I told him to face the opposite way and to not turn around and look at me. And let's just say I asked him kindly to drop all the food that he had. And he dropped a bunch of it. He easily could have said he had none. But the gun was working. And then of course I got greedy. And I stole his diamond chest plate as well. Now. The tricky part was. This guy was pretty close to where I lived. And I didn't want him seeing me return to my base. I buried him in a hole and asked him to wait 30 seconds. I ran the opposite direction of my base, just in case somehow he was watching. I turned away and I ran off. And as I was heading up the hill, I saw two people coming towards me. I instantly turned around and legged it. This person had clearly called for backup. And it looked like they were making a base here too. I was lucky to escape. See, here's the thing. If you want to be a Minecraft bandit on the server, you gotta have a secret base. And this secret base needs to go deep underground. You need to be self-sufficient. So you need a farm and lots of them. Enough to feed you and your gang. 
and you also need a chest room to store all the valuable goods that you're about to raid. And this one's optional, but you need a trophy room where you can store all the heads of the victims you have murdered. And this is Minecraft after all, so you're gonna need a mine, but that mine needs to make sure it doesn't lead back to your base. So with your new mine, get mining. And return home with a huge haul of ores. And with those ores, it's now time to start making your weapons and your armor. And this is my armor. It conceals me and hides my identity because there are no nameplates on this server. So if no one can see my skin, they don't know it's me. Meaning they can't put a bounty on my head. They can only put a bounty on what I look like, not who I am. I went ahead and I crafted myself two guns. Starting with the Remington ACR. This is a 100 round mag assault rifle. And it's perfect for all environments. And I also crafted myself a trusty little pistol. Something I can whip out in case of emergency. And that has now completed my look. For the first time in what feels like ages, it is now time to head to the surface and go on the hunt. I had my eyes on this nearby base. We were neighbors, they just didn't know. But this was a huge faction base. And from studying it for days, I could see that there were seven of them. They weren't overly rich, but them all together, it was something that I couldn't take. While watching the base, I noticed one player leaving. He was going into the wilderness, a dangerous place for a person to go alone. And that opened an opportunity for myself to strike. He was heading into the dark forest. I tried to follow his rough direction and then he jumped down into the clearing area. The hunt is now on and he doesn't even know it. I gathered all his loot as quick as I could and I fled the scene. I'm sure any minute now the alarm is going to be raised and they're going to be hunting for me. He should have been more careful. I returned home as quick as I could. That base is extremely close to mine. And those now six players would be out searching, looking for the person that just killed their friend. So this will be the true test that my bunker works. But of course, it was now time to put down my first head. Wizard Boy was my first kill. And the first head to go down in the trophy room. But this kill was so worth it. We had managed to get ourselves a second gun. Very, very useful. I'm not gonna lie. After that kill, I was on a pretty big high. So I decided I would leave the base as quick as I could. Even though I knew that team would be out searching. But I was gonna go to the opposite end of the map. And try find more victims. To bring home to my base. I had my eyes on my next victim. And this time I had a briefcase with me. And inside this briefcase I had deadly poison. I got this off a skeleton. And if this deadly poison is consumed. It's fatal. Now I know what you might be saying. How can I get this player to right click a deadly poison? Well, you get him in Discord and you be friendly to him. This is gonna sound really dumb, right? And I have a bunker close. Now, if yes, I sir. wanted to kill you, I could have killed you. But I don't. I'm just working on my base, doing my underground shiz a whistle. I just need to get infected blood. And I can't take my own blood and I'm solo. So, can I ask you to do me a favor? So I can build the machine I want. What do you want done? I need infected blood. I need to take it from a player. So. I'm just going to put this down. Okay. I'm going to throw you this thing right here. Okay. Inside is the thing that gives you the infected blood. 
and then I will take it from you and we will go our separate way. It will give you poison, you'll go down to half a heart. If less, unless you eat, you'll be fine. Can you tell me what machine you need, Bill? The adapter thing, so I can actually make nuclear bombs. Well, not nuclear bombs, but... All right, so after the situation, I'll give you, um, start, uh, what is it? I will give you information that you'll need to know. I'll accept this, because I know you could have killed me then. Exactly. The trick worked, and the funny thing was when people consumed this deadly poison, the deadly poison didn't seem to delete itself. I still had it in my inventory. I managed to pick it up again off his body, but this was amazing. I was after killing another player without spilling any ammo or sweat. It was perfect. The briefcase luckily came in handy as extra storage also. When fleeing the scene, I also stumbled across a very peaceful looking house. There wasn't much in here. But whoever lived here, it seemed like a team of two judging by the beacons placed down. It looked like they weren't home yet. I waited here for a little while. Seeing would they return home. But they didn't. But I'll return. These guys look vulnerable. Later on that day, I also returned back to the spawn area. I wanted to see was anyone doing anything at the middle of the map. And people were. There seemed to have been a large structure on top of the hill. Someone was making a well-fortified base. And I can only assume that this was a team of a lot of players. So I needed to be careful. But I spotted someone out in the field below. I was attempting to hide behind a tree. But I think he saw me. He kept etching his way closer, and it kind of spooked me, so I opened fired. Killed him quickly and ran, because there was people on top of the hill. It was a shame because I didn't manage to loot him. But at the moment, I am on a killing spree, and it seemed like I wasn't being punished. Because as I was fleeing the scene, I stumbled across another settlement. No one seemed home at first, and from the beacons I could see that this was at least a two-man settlement. Two people I could deal with. Three or four, maybe. Five or more, mm, I'm not going anywhere near. But it seemed like these people weren't home. So I was exploring the base. Their base seemed to go underground, so I followed it. And I stumbled into a workroom. This is when I found out there was a third beacon. This was obviously a three-man base. The only one of them was here. But I wanted to try and do the whole deadly injection trick again. So I put down my sign. I didn't want to message him because I didn't want him knowing it's me straight away. I waited to see would he return, but he wasn't. So I decided I would just stab him in the back. But he returned. And I tried to play it off like I wasn't trying to just kill him. He joined the Discord. I tried to explain to him that I'm trying to make a weapon. A type of bomb, I said. I said I need him to inject himself with this deadly poison. I said all it would do would give you a poison-like effect. And then I would have to right-click him with a bucket and get poison blood. I just made this up. Now, he agreed. But on a server with no rules, he really shouldn't just go along with things. But I suppose he saw the gun that I had and the armor I had and had no choice. So he said, let me get some food so that when I get poisoned, I can just heal back up. Sure. Have your last feed, I said in my head. I also told him not to contact anyone. I don't want any surprises. As I was waiting for him to make his bread, so he could have his last meal. I noticed a player in the distance who saw me and I saw him and he started running away, but I got paranoid. It seemed like he was heading back somewhere to tell people. Or it was his teammate. I'm unsure, but I tried to hurry up the process. He right clicked and he died. <laughs> easy, easy kill. But I'm not gonna lie, at this moment I was quite paranoid, thinking that someone was coming back. Because he did kind of slip that his friend was on the server. So I kind of fled the scene for a second. But then 15 minutes later, returned. The guy that I'd seen over the hill was now at the base. It was his friend, I believe. 
A creeper was keeping him occupied by the stairs. I was just waiting for him to come up. I wanted to annihilate this settlement and raid as much as possible. Two players down. There was only one more that I knew that lived in this base. But where was he? I took as much stuff as I could carry, storing as many things in my briefcase as I could. These guys had a lot of guns, I must admit. Vectors. That was now a submachine gun added to my arsenal. This was great. I managed to find myself a missile as well. These guys were working hard. The only thing I didn't have was a platform to be able to fire it from. But this would be perfect for taking out the settlement that is close to mine. It'll be useful, for sure. But I raided as much as I could. Burnt down the house and left. I knew the third teammate would be back soon. So I sat on the hill. Waiting. And I saw him. And I was ready to move in. And I had my moment. But then I suppose nice Ryan came back. For a split second, and I felt bad. I just knocked out his two friends. So I'll let him grieve. If he wants to stay living there, that's his funeral. I returned home and immediately started storing all the loot that I had gotten throughout the days. So having all the extra resources that I've got from my victims, I was able to do some major base upgrade. I started by making myself an escape tunnel, hooked up to a railcart system, so if anyone comes, I can get out as quick as possible. I also installed security cameras all around the base, so I have eyes everywhere. I even booby trapped the top of my base, so if someone enters and opens a chest, it will set off an alarm alerting me, allowing me to either escape or go into my safe room. Yeah, that's right, I made a safe room. This is where my control panel for all my security cameras are, so I can decide when to come out and when to not. But all these base improvements made me hungry, and it was time to head back out, pick up the armor, and continue the murdering and raiding adventure. And I knew just a house to go to. That was the little peaceful house I'd seen on top of the hill, and this time the person that owned it was home, or one of them was home. And I noticed he was taking stuff out of his base and putting inside a secret chest just on the hill there. Little did this guy know that he wasn't really going to be on the server long enough to have a secret chest. I ran up to his door with a claymore. So that when he comes out, it'll go boom. He was damaged. But at this point, I don't think he knew exactly what was going on. I think he assumes a creeper just exploded outside his front door. He doesn't seem to be in a panic, but he should be. He was now dead. But just as I killed him, the rain started pouring, and thunder started going off like mad. It was like the server was telling me, no, you are bad. <laughs> was it a sign for things to come? But I found the secret chest that he was trying to store in, and he had some stuff for a solo little guy. He had diamonds, iron, loads of other ores, a handgun. It's pretty good. I took it all and I stored it in my briefcase. I burnt down the house and I jumped down to now loot the guy I had just slain. And he popped with a ton of loot. This guy had a gun. It's a shame that I'm so sneaky he didn't even get to use it. I stored as much as I could and I headed back to base. But while heading back to base, I got jumped.
For the first time, I was getting a taste of my own medicine. I was up against an evenly geared player. And I think this was the friend that lived inside the house. That's what I assumed anyway. But we were having a fight back and forth and not much was happening. We felt evenly matched. Or that's what I assumed. When the guy shot me with what seemed like a sniper by the sounds of it. And it took me straight down to three hearts. See, snipers were rare, and they only come in admin supply drops, which I had not found any yet. I was now being hunted. And after that shot, my hands were now shaking, because I was in a big open field. Perfect sniping conditions, if you ask me. So I got on top of a hill, and I hid. I watched him walk right by me, just where I came. I thought I'd gotten away with it, but he had seen me, so I kept running. All he had to do was hit me twice with that sniper and I'm dead. So I had an idea. Went on top of the hill and tried to wait here. Hoping that he would just run over the hill thinking I went over there and I could go in another direction. This is also a risky move. Me being closer to him means it's easier for him to hit. I got down. Staying as low as possible. He was searching for me. I thought he was coming back up the hill, right towards me, but he was actually going down the hill. He thought I jumped into the water by the seams of it, but that's when he spotted me again, because I looked at him like an idiot. But this time there was a mountain between him and myself, so I just ran off. And while running off, I managed to find my first admin supply drop. And in here there wasn't a sniper which I would have loved, but attachments for ARs. So this could go on my Remington if I wanted to. It had a red dot, a silencer, and a grip. I suppose this is actually kind of useful for the fact that we can't craft this kind of stuff. With this cool loot, I started heading home. But little did I know there was a threat following right behind me. He was using the tactics of how I killed my first victim. And I didn't hear him. Thanks to replay mod, I'm able to see this now. And it makes me look like the worst Minecraft player ever, but you just don't know who's behind you. But if I didn't put portable radars in my base, I wouldn't have known. But luckily I did. Tomer underscore Tom 87 came up in chat that he's near my portable radar. This is when I knew I'd been followed home. So I went to my emergency room. I went into my security cameras. Looking around. I stayed watching the camera what felt like for an eternity. When I saw a figure approach the door. My hideout was now breached. He was inside my secret base. He was confused by my pressure plate, which I suppose you would be. He triggered my alarm. And he also found my second alarm. He slowly started coming down the ladder. He had found the ultimate hideout. Now at this point I was staying inside my bunker, my secret room. Because at the end of the day, if I die, I won't be respawned. If he raids me, it'll be a shame, but that stuff you can replace. It was actually funny, watching him in the security cameras just looking around to see where I was. He was hunting for me. He now started heading out of the chest room. Going straight towards my cage trap, he had now been encaged. And this thing is amazing because you cannot break out of it unless you have a certain tool. I watched for ages just waiting to see did he have the tool he needed. But he didn't. He was trapped inside here and there's no way of getting out. I left the safe room, knowing he's entrapped now. The only thing I'm scared about right now is if he messages someone else to courts. But he seemed to have been a solo player. At this point, I didn't know if you could still shoot through the bars. 
So I wanted to play careful. But I had to test. He tried shooting at me. But it was useless. You can't shoot through the bars. This is perfect. I now have a player entrapped in my base. Keep shooting, Thomas. It's gonna do nothing for you. As he was entrapped, we got talking. And we kind of became friends. See, me and Thomas have a deep history of each other. We're good friends. And he's a bandit himself. So he joined me and my underground operation. And I told him about a nearby base that we cannot raid. Or that I cannot do alone. And if we can take this base down together, we will come home with a lot of loot. We'll be rich. This bandit hideout was now for two. And it felt good talking to someone. It is quite lonely when you play by yourself. So we both headed out towards the direction of the base. We had a look at their base and we noticed a massive tower that overhangs right above them. It's a huge weakness. But just as we saw it, a plane passed us by. We got to the ground as quick as we could. I don't think he saw us. Now, our mission was to climb that hill and to get a vantage point above their base. Thomas had left me with the sniper in charge of taking out all the weak ones. This was going to be a sneaky attack and to take them by surprise. If they're not ready for this, this will be a great success. Let the plan commence. The base was now weak. The rest of them were cowering underground, taking cover. With this, I took the initiative for Thomas to start bridging across and for me to cover him. We were going in. We stormed the base like commandos, hunting down all the ones that cowered underground. We found one hiding underground and we opened fire and he opened fire back. And in the crossfire, Thomas got knocked off the edge. He had died way too soon. It was now just me by myself again. Like good old times. Thomas knew exactly what he was getting himself into. And he went out doing the thing he loved. Killing other people. And I'm going to continue to raid in his memory. I now knew there was one more guy hiding in this base area. I could hear him. I started hunting for him. I heard him going down the ladder. He was trying to escape. But there's no escaping me. You only escape if I let you escape. That was it. The base was now mine. It should have been ours, but Thomas sadly lost his life. That could have been any one of us. Out of respect, I'm gonna leave Thomas' grave here. I'm not gonna loot it, so it can just be frozen in time. But there was no time to grieve, and no time to raid just yet. Because during the attack, I had noticed that my radar had gone off. That a player called Inferno was near it. So I went home, thinking the worst thinking my base was being raided again. And I was also a little concerned that maybe Thomas had betrayed me. Maybe he lied that he was alone. Maybe he was trying to get revenge for someone that I killed. There was all sorts of things racing through my brain. I went into the base, gone out, I took it slow.
I searched it, but it was untouched. No one had been here. Nothing was missing. I can only assume that the person was just running above the base area and the radar picked it up. Only time would tell. Over the next few days, I kept running back between the base that I just raided. Raiding all the loot. These guys were rich. And this base was so rich compared to all the other bases I had raided in the past days. It took a while to move everything out. But I cleared the whole entire base. All the stuff that I didn't take, I burnt. So another faction couldn't come along and take it. I headed down to the ground to pay my last respects to Thomas and just to say goodbye. The rain was very fitting. Just wrong place at the wrong time, I suppose. It was over, but life goes on. Goodbye, Tom. You'll be missed. I luckily had spare armor, and I now had Tomer's head. So, in honor of him, I made an armor stand. So that he'll always be in my base. And also, if anyone decides to come into the base, it's gonna freak them out. And it wouldn't be this series if I didn't place down all the heads of the victims that I just murdered. When scouring through all the loot that I had raided, I actually found that I managed to loot a plane of one of the guys. It was the plane we saw in the sky. It was fueled and had armor. I now had a plane for doing barely any work at all. I suppose you could say there was a cost of life. We did lose Thomas. And that's a very valuable resource. Can't get a friend back like that. The plane will never replace him. But it's definitely much faster than him. This was the perfect tool to now go look for other bases. I was safe in the sky. Or so I thought. I was flying to every corner of the map. And in the corner I had found a base. And this was a real faction base. This made the last base look like nothing compared to this. This base had obsidian, a tank inside it, AA guns. This was a proper factions team and they were also geared. This would be one hornet nest that I wouldn't want to stir. So I flew off, searching for more bases. And I did find another, but it looked abandoned. It had probably already been wiped out by that big team in the corner. But this is when I spotted something interesting. Another plane in the sky. And of course I couldn't resist. I opened fired. And I started attacking. The plane that this player was flying was extremely slow. And it was a sitting gun. But I nearly had him. But he was heading to that big corner base. So I banked right. I couldn't go anywhere near him. Without thinking, I had just stirred that hornet nest. And a plane was dispatched to try and take me out. But I'd luckily intercepted behind it. And started attacking it. This was also quite important. Because if I could take down all their planes, one by one, they couldn't follow me back to wherever I live. There wasn't much the plane could do in front of me, other than dodge and weave. But he must have been going low. I fired so many shots into him. You can even see the hit markers coming up in the middle of the screen. And I was right. He was going low. He had no wings. No propeller. He was falling out of the sky. He was now going to be easy pickings. He was now very far away from his base. This would be the perfect opportunity to hunt him down from the skies and take him out. No big base in the corner is going to save you now. So I started swooping in. Watching this back, I'm not sure why he didn't just dig underground. Maybe he was confident in his dodging and weaving, but he shouldn't have been. He was heading towards the village. He was gonna hide there, but just in the nick of time, I took him out. That's one less player to worry about now. But I just stirred that hornet's nest. And if there's any team that's going to be after me, it's going to be that one. So I immediately started heading home. I landed the plane at the faction base that I took out previously, where Thomas had lost his life. It was so nice having a runway very close to my base. 
And that brings us to the end of this 100 days journey as a Minecraft bandit. It was action packed and I done what I didn't think I could do. I survived. Will I survive the next 100 days to come? You'll have to find out. If you guys got this far, comment bandit in the chat and I'll see you in the next one.